Welcome to this amazing session. Hello, Good hello, night. hello. Yes, 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 yes. Hello, everyone joining us right now. We're so glad that you're here. Hi, Tofumi, how are you? I'm very well, thank you, Dr. Nee. How are you doing today? I'm really excited. I'm, I'm pumped up for this, you know. Um, it's a journey we started a many months ago, and now we're getting to the... Grand the, finale. Amazing, amazing, amazing. How's your day been? Uh, it's been a full-on, full-on weekend here, but I'm so excited for tonight, and I know it's going to be an awesome, awesome time. What about you? How's your day been? Uh, yeah, babysitting, actually. Um, <laughs> yeah, me, I like so she had to go for classes, and um, so I've been babysitting. I just My babysitter just came in to take over just now, so... <laughs> so that i can be here but it's um so it's been, a, been an enjoy, enjoyable day with the boys you know it's always fun awesome, to awesome. Awesome. guys <laughs> thank you for being here we're so glad that you're here and we hope that you have a value today so let us know where you're joining us from anywhere in the world let us know where you're joining us from we're glad that you're here this is um i'm me Boire. i'm a neurologist i'm a change agent and i've got a mandate to help you discover the leader that is in you and live up to your potentials okay so i've got tofumi here with us um and tofumi is my how will i say this tofumi <laughs> depends, right? depends, right? it, it, depends. it changes the role changes <laughs> okay how oh, about today tofumi is my colleague she's my partner in crime today and i think wow, I've this is an upgrade <laughs> yes yes yes, yes. So we're, we're partners today hey all right. I, I like to, you know, I like to show for the people that really help and walk around behind the scenes. You know, Tofumi has been with me now almost a year now. We've been together. It's been an amazing journey. And thank you for making yourself available to support my vision and the dreams that you know that I have. Thanks, you know. Uh, and I think we've also got one more person on our team now. Hey, let's introduce one more person to the team. Yes, Mary, introducing Mary, Mary, Mary. <laughs> thank you, Mary. Thank you. Hi, Mary. Hi. Hi, Hi, Mary. Thanks for being with us and thank you for supporting us and thank, thank you for you know, so all much. that you do. Amazing, amazing. So these wonderful women have been helping me with this dream and with what I do. You know, I'm a very busy person, but they've been helping to make this work easy for me. So thank you. I appreciate all your love, support, and your um, you know, sacrifice. Okay. Um, God bless you so much guys Amen. okay i think we should get into the into the cross of the matter right okay we've got a wonderful session today so for everyone watching right now this is the leadership series it's going to be an amazing show today we've got five people including myself so four extra people that will be talking about so the leadership series this topic is something that i reckon i reckon is is important you know for our lives important for what we do important you know if we're going to be successful as leaders and that's what we're going to be um, talking about today so it's going to be an amazing session we're going to be looking at common mistakes that young leaders make common mistakes that young leaders make we've got a bit of background noise there i'm not sure where that's coming from right now all right um yeah common mistakes that young leaders make so please you've got to be part of this conversation all right now you're allowed to invite your friends wherever they are just send a link i think youtube right now send the youtube link to your friends and just remind them yeah come on and join this conversation uh we've got some wonderful thought leaders um visionaries with us right now and you know and they would be able to they, they, they're, they're ready to share their you know um their understanding their ideas about leadership especially in this generation so common leaders that young 
um, common mistakes that young leaders make is what we'll be talking about today. Uh, are you ready, Mary? Yes, very well, yes. Mary, yes. Absolutely. All righty. So please let us know where you're joining us from, wherever you are in the world. I think we've got a few people here. Evie is joining us. Evie is saying, let's go. Moses Abayawa from Nigeria. Moses, Moses Abayawa is always with us. God bless you, Moses. If you are from Perth, Western Australia, if you are from Perth, Western Australia, thanks for connecting with us. Evie from Sydney is here. Thank you. Stephen from uh, David Knight from Nigeria. Thank you for joining us right now. Um, Janice Movement from Nigeria is also here. Um, Tofumi, can you see any other person there? Yes, I see Terry Omodibo from Nigeria is also here. Olawale Tosin is from Sydney. A lot of people are not, they haven't um, allowed StreamYard to um, see their names, so I can't actually see who you are. But I can see that someone's joined in from Cambridge. Esther saying hello from UK. Okwe from Sydney. Wow, we've got quite a diverse crowd this yeah, morning so or evening, depending on where you're watching from. Yeah, from the UK, from Cambridge, from Perth, um, you know, Nigeria, you know, all over the world. Amazing. So please, if you're on Facebook, watching us from Facebook, just I think you need to allow StreamYard to connect to your yeah. Facebook um, um, account so that we can we can see you. Someone else is from. Don't, say, don't forget me. Yeah, I can't exactly. remember your name. <laughs> all right, somebody say to me, don't forget me. <laughs> All right, another person from Melbourne. Amazing, amazing. All right, okay, so let's get into this, okay? So Tofumi, do you want to read the bio of our panelists and then we'll bring them up so that we can have a conversation about yes, uh, Okay, so our first guest for tonight is Kemi Oye. Kemi Oye is a career coach, a HR professional, trainer, and speaker based in the UK. Known as the career doctor, God's mandate on her life is to help people discover their purpose-driven career so that they can be impactful and fulfilled at work. Kemi is an HR professional authoritatively positioned in her career as a result of two decades of experience in the HR space, working with a wide range of leaders from mid-level to board-level executives. Kemi is on a mission to see the narrative around work change. She believes that everyone should thrive and love being in the workplace because they're able to deploy their talents, passion and personality appropriately as opposed to working out of necessity. So can we all please welcome Kemi Oye to the stage. Wow, amazing, amazing. That's a great profile. Hello, Kemi. hello. Okay. I'm so hello. sorry I have to cut down your bio tonight to all our guest speakers. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're giving an abridged version tonight. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. It's a pleasure to be here. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Um, oh, we're matching this evening. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, I noticed that and I thought, oh, okay, we're in the spirit. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Great minds think alike. <laughs> it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our second speaker for tonight is Oi Damola. So with 10, year, 10 plus years of designing and implementing social innovation projects in Africa, Europe, Southeast Asia, and North America, covering talent management, higher education, nonprofit management, and youth development, Oi Damola is passionate about raising ethical leaders to drive innovation, innovation, entrepreneurship, and development in rural and urban communities, as well as empowering professionals Sorry about that. Empowering professionals to build impactful careers and function effectively at the intersection of passion, purpose, impact, and profit. Oida Mola's unique ability to cut through complex complexity to find the heart of the matter has shaped his leadership philosophy and ability to lead and work effectively with multicultural teams. His area of expertise covers agile leadership, people and talent development, human capital strategy, and change management. So can we all please welcome Oye Damala to the stage? Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank That's you, sir. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, we can, we can. Okay, great, 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 great. I was saying that's a very intimidating bio. <laughs> <laughs> and that's trimmed down. That's not even the full thing. <laughs> oh, trimmed that down. <laughs> wow. Amazing. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And um, yes. nice to meet you, Kemi, and um, the other panelists. Yes. yes, nice to meet you, sir. All righty. Let's All right. go. I'll Third panelist that I'll be welcoming onto the stage is also named Kemi. So we have Kemi Ogukoya here with us tonight. So Kemi Ogukoya is a leadership development strategist, management consultant, author, and member of the Forbes Business Council. She has worked with numerous businesses across the world to develop the cap capability of their leaders. She's the founder of Release Works, 
a leadership development company and is also a member of the board of trustees of the Power Woman Network. She's the author of The Goal Ma Mastery, Magical Pills and The Leadership Guardian. She's married and blessed with two amazing children. So let's please welcome our third panelist up to the stage. Wow. Thank you. Let's bring her up now. Yes. Hi. Hello. 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 It's Thank good to be here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. All right. All right, last and certainly not least, we have Oluwa Shil Oye Neuron. He's a student and teacher of enduring greatness. He's an author, visionary, and data enthusiast. He's currently a PhD scholar in leadership at Regent University USA. He won the Going Global Responsible Leadership Award in 2011, and having held leadership roles in corporate and not-for-profit sectors, has gained, has gained exposure in the areas of sustainable personal growth and development. His passion is for ordinary individuals to reach the fullness of their core gifts, abilities, and potentials. He believes every individual is born to be extraordinary in life and that through training and serving with our gifts, we can maximize our creativity, productivity, and impact. He speaks at a number of international conferences and is the founder of OES Education, a teaching and learning platform for raising transformational, transgenerational leaders. So let's please welcome uh, Sean Oyeni onto the stage. Amazing, amazing. Wow, this is really, really good. I'm really glad that you guys have all, you know, um, agreed to join me in this conversation. And um, um, I'll have to just start by saying that um, um, I, I felt a strong body around August last year um, to, to help build young leaders, um, leaders of the future. Um, and, you know, what God told me was in two dimensions. The first was to help people navigate change without losing their purpose, their identity, and their individuality. But the second mandate was to also build leaders that are not just reactionary, but visionary. Leaders that will create their own desired change and bring about transformation in society. And, I, and, and that's the journey that I've embarked on in my journey of understanding what leadership is and in my understanding of um, using um, not just my um, spiritual background or but even my neuroscience my neuroscience background and bringing that into the sphere of leadership um, and that's what this is all about so uh, i i'm focused now on helping leaders you know improve their productivity improve their um, their efficiency as leaders so that we can have a much more um, robust um, society, balanced society, and it has to start with our young people. And that's why we're here. And I'm glad you're all here. All right, thank you so much. So audience, please, wherever you're watching us from, please welcome this wonderful, wonderful, amazing people. All right, great, great panelists. Thank you so much for being here. And two for me, thank you for reading the bios. God bless you. I'll let you go. All right, great. So we've got Kem Yui, we've got, um, 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 uh, Ola Johnson, we have Kemi Bukoya, and we also have um, Sheung Poinero. God bless you all. Thank you so much for being here. How are you guys? Who wants to just say something? How is, what, what does it feel like being here? How's your day being? Uh, just something. Maybe I should go first. Uh, yes. Uh, it's 4 a.m. here in Canada. I'm, wow. I'm joining, so I wanted to start with that first. But <laughs> having said that, it's just to indicate how excited I am to be here. To be, um, I know once, uh, but it's interesting as we finish, my Canadian fellows and Americans will be getting up to watch this. So I think this is going to be a power pack session that will continue to play all through the rest of the week. Um, and just to express my excitement to hear again, I, I was in Australia, in New Zealand, um, January 2020, shortly mm -hmm. before the pandemic kicked in and with Dr. Mm -hmm. Sam. And one of the things we planned to do actually, Dr. Nee, was to stumble over your house <laughs> to just be a business. <laughs> But sadly, um, things didn't work out as we expect. But just to express my excitement that uh, excitement that I'm, I'm glad to be here, and that um, we've been you've been on this journey that has really inspired a lot of us. Um, we've watched you over the over the years, over the months, and particularly putting this program together. And we're just grateful to God for your life. Um, we're grateful to God for what you're doing, and just the opportunity to be a part of it is something I we don't take for granted at all, at all as well. So thank you so much, and I am excited to meet every one of you. I know some of you are already in, in, in person um, through other platforms, 
Um, Kemi Bukoy, I've already read a lot. That your colorful article was that's awesome. Um, Kemi, <laughs> yeah, thank you for what you do. And I didn't want to add Mala Johnson. I can't even say too much. Those your posts are incredible. So just excited to be here. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. That's the power of social media, isn't it? The fact that, mm -hmm. you know, um, I've not met any of you in person, but I feel connected with you like, in different ways, you know, so great to be here. Well, let's just get into the cross of the matter. Okay, we're talking about leadership today, and the title is Common Mistakes That Young Leaders Make. So, guys, that's what we're talking about today, Common Mistakes That Young Leaders Make. As a matter of housekeeping, as I said, if you're on Facebook, please make sure you authorize Facebook to allow StreamYard to pick your um, name, so that way we can identify you in the comments um, section. Um, so, and let us know wherever you're joining from. We'll try to acknowledge you as much as we can. And if you have questions, please feel free to put down your questions. We will get to them uh, as much as um, as possible. Um, and so, great. So let's just start. Um, our conversation is going to be in five different domains. We're going to look at leadership in different areas. Okay. And I thought, you know, to break it down in this format so that we can be, you know, as um, we can have a little bit of direction in our conversation, okay? And this is a, it's not scripted, so anyone can share whatever you want to share about those, these areas. And our goal is not just to identify problems or to call at, um, the attention of young leaders to problems. Our goal is also to, to prescribe solutions. Um, that's what we're here for. So we're looking at leadership from these different angles. Number one, the mandate. Number two, the message. Number three, the methods. Number four, the manner, that's M -A -N -N -E -R, and number five, the medals. So the mandate, the mandate of leadership, the message of a leader, the methods that we employ as leaders, the manner, that's the lifestyle, the leadership style, and the medals, how we handle success when they do come. All right, so what are the mistakes in these different areas and how do people get it wrong? I reckon the probably the biggest one, the biggest mistake is in the area of the mandate. All right. And and I think we should just start with that. So I'm not sure. Maybe, um, you know, maybe I'll start with Kenny Mukwaya on this. You know, you're a leadership expert. All right. Um, and from your own interactions with people, learnings, readings and your own book, your original book, Leadership Guardian, which hopefully we'll come to, you know, what are what are the what are the pitfalls that people, young leaders particularly fall into when it comes to their leadership mandate, their calling, their purpose, what they've been called to do, understanding and working in that line. So what do you want to say? All right. Thank you very much. It's such a great honor and privilege to be here. I do not take it for granted. It's great to meet every one of you here. And, you know, I hope to connect with a whole lot more <laughs> right after this session. Um, so a big welcome to everyone who is also joining and, you know, leadership is an area that I'm really, really passionate about. And when we talk about the mandate, especially when it has to do with the, you know, coming generation, this, in fact, this present generation, let's start with this present generation. I think there's a whole lot of lack of clarity, you know, really about what the expectations are. Uh, there's a whole lot of lack of clarity around the responsibility that lie on our shoulders as individuals. Um, and, you know, there's no way we can actually go into the future or, you know, just nip down on this generation without taking account of what has happened in generations that have come before, you know, and, and um, other generations that they also look up to. So, fine, I would say that it begins with that lack of clarity about who they really are. And when you look at the world that we live in today, there seems to be a whole lot of distraction. And, you know, I remember having a conversation with a business leader last week who was so upset about um, the, the, the employee she had. You know, she was so frustrated. I don't know how to deal with these guys. They seem not to get it. Zero ethics zero procedure and you know and all of that and then I, I told her i said you know what sometimes um i think a lot of leaders are being unfair right to really understanding where these guys are they are dealing or they're living in unprecedented times right um i'm not sure there's any generation that had to deal with so much infiltration as much as this present generation so we have to come from that place of compassion really and it's not about helping or coming from that place where we're castigating them. I think we have to come from that place of understanding of the, 
the, the peculiarity of the issues that they have to deal with in terms of lack of clarity. So if you live in, you have grown in an environment where it's all been about materialization, where it's been about people who just want to get ahead at all costs, where the representation of leadership is flawed already, where it's been about, oh, you know what, we're clamoring for people, not because of their content, but because of how much they have in their bank account. Then there will definitely be something wrong in the expression of leadership in that generation. So I think there's a whole lot of lack of clarity, you know, because of um, moral bankruptcy, because of lack of great role models, you know, because of the focus on materialization. Uh, so those are some of the things that have led to this lack of clarity. For this generation, we have to now get back to the drawing board to help people understand from the core of who they are. I always say that you cannot become great at what you do unless you become great at who you are. So we need to help them get to that point where they can actually start, you know, from the place of self and understand that for them to, you know, live a life where there can be so much fulfillment, which is what a lot of them are looking for, trying to get, okay, what is my purpose? How can I, how can I live a life that, you know, is beyond me? We need to understand that for us to live that life that is beyond us, it's also our responsibility to preserve a life for those who are to come. So we have to start from that place of clarity. There is a lack of clarity, and I think that's where I would I would start from. Wow, wow, I like that. You know, what you just said now struck me. You know, you cannot be great at what you do, except you're great at who you are. Like having an understanding of who you are sort of opens the door, gives you the permission to do what you've been called to do. All right, and nobody knows more about doing, you know, than the career coach herself, Kemi Oe, the, the other Kemi. Uh, right, and have, you know, let, let, let's go. Let's go to this. What, what do you see? And I'm sure you probably see a lot of professionals who approach you um, because they lack clarity. You know, uh, and it's is it not possible for someone to occupy a leadership position without a clear mandate about what they should be doing? Okay, thank you, um, Dr. Nee. And like everyone has said, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, I think. Um, Kemi Ogunkoy has said a lot, and I think it stems from just that place of clarity and finding out why exactly am I here? What am I meant to be doing? Because if you don't get that, then hello, what are you going to be doing? You'll probably end up doing the wrong thing. So I think for me, um, like Kemi has already said, it's about having that clarity of vision, having that, whether it's your career, whether it's w in whatever area, and I, I guess. I can talk from a place of career because that's what I do. Um, and for me, it's really about knowing why, what, um, why, why, why am I here? So that's one question about what am I, what am I here to do? And then also there's this question about, okay, I'm in the workplace. For example, I'm taking it back to the workplace now. Um, why am I doing the work that I do? How did I end up here? So it, I think really for me, it's going back a step and saying, how did I end up where I am now, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. doing this career, probably don't love it, probably love it, but how did I get here? And how can I retrace my steps to really go to the core of who I am and how can I show up really well in the workplace? I've come across about four different types of people in the workplace. Um, and that's confused, frustrated, comfortable, and fulfilled. Mm. So I'll explain what I mean. Those people who are confused, they don't know what they're meant to be doing. So they don't have this clarity. And they end up maybe just applying for whatever is out there, looking for jobs all over the place because they don't have that clarity. People who are frustrated, they probably know what they're meant to be doing, but they're not doing it because they put up self um, limiting um, barriers so that almost like stopping themselves whether it's through fear whether it's you know all those things they put it up and they just can't seem to move forward those who are comfortable end up being in a place where they're doing this job it pays the bills they're okay and they don't see beyond their nine to five daily right they don't see mm -hmm. beyond they don't see that they have a wider or higher purpose and those who are fulfilled are doing what they're meant to be doing and doing it well I'll go back a step. So if you're there asking, oh, but how do I actually discover what I'm meant to do? 
I talk about this 3D framework. So the first thing you do is discover. You go to a place of discovery and how can you discover what you're meant to be doing? From my own perspective, it's going to God, going to your maker and saying, why am I here? What are the things that you've given to me that I, I, I need to employ? So for example, look to your talents, look to your passion, look to your personality. I think that is so central to everything we do. So for mm. example, if my personality is such that I'm, I'm, I don't like being in confined places and I work in an environment that you know, makes me work in confined places, I'm not gonna thrive. So it's really knowing about your personality, your passion and all those things and making sure that you know who you, what you're meant to be doing, that's discover. And then we move to the place of design. So what does that look like? What does the work, so I've, I've discovered all these things, I've gone to God. Then we start to design and deploy. Okay, this is what I, I'm going to do and I'm gonna run this course. And then the third stage is de develop, of course. You can't, you know, you, you need to be able to develop in whatever, you know, God has called you to do or whatever you're doing. So I think for me, it's about knowing what you're meant to do and doing it so well that you become, you know, you, you, you're you able to impact on other people's lives. Because it's not about you. It's not about just existing for you. It's about why am I here? I'm here for the blessed, to, for other people to be blessed. And so, you know, when we go about thinking, oh, what must I do? I think we need to reverse and say, what do I have to give as opposed to what must I do? So what is in me that can be a blessing to humanity? And I will stop there for other people to talk. <laughs> no, I really like that. I really, really like that because you're already, you know, speaking, you know, to the core of the matter and providing the solutions to that. You know, um, there are a lot of people out there and, I, and I'll get, um, um, I'm going to, to speak to this. There are a lot of people out there who are probably in careers that have nothing to do with the mandate that they really have um, as individuals. I'll give myself an example. So I, I initially, after I finished um, high school or secondary school, um, went um, to college to study computer science. And I did not struggle at all because I was very good with math. In fact, I remember in, in the college, I had a distinction in calculus and you know the advanced mathematics. So I was really good at mathematics and programming. And um, I finished the last semester, I remember I had a high distinction. All right, I was top on the, of the class. But I, I realized that, you know, at a point that this was not me. I, I was not a programmer. You know, it wasn't, you know, this was not me standing, you know, sitting before a computer and writing code and one zeros and all this programming languages was not just me. I needed to be, you know, in, in contact with people, you know, helping people and, you know, and that was just what was really there me. And that's why immediately after that, even though I did relatively okay, I decided to switch careers and go back um, to study medicine. And that's one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. All right. So, um, um, how do we reconcile this? There are a lot of people in careers that have nothing to do with their passion or no, not even just their passion. Because I remember you put up a, quote, a, a post a few days ago about passion and purpose. All right. So a lot of people are, are, are doing things that they have, have nothing to do with their purpose. All right. How, you know, how did they get it wrong and how can they come out of it? You know, because that's a fundamental mistake. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you so much. Uh, can you hear me? Um, yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much to um, the speakers and um, thank you so much to uh, Dr. Nee for the invitation. Um, I have my notes here. I've been jotting, <laughs> I've been jotting down all, all morning uh, because in, a, in, as, in as much as I came to, to share, I also came to learn. Um, so I'm just going to touch on a couple of things um, in reference to um, the question you've asked. Um, for me, clarity comes part time. Clarity comes per season, and clarity comes per phase. Clarity comes per time, per season, and per phase. And um, we also need to understand that clarity is a journey, not a destination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clarity is not a journey, not a destination. So if you, if you um, combine it with a statement I said earlier, then it makes sense, which is clarity being a journey, not a destination, because it comes per season, per time and per face. Um, when, when it comes to individuals who uh, are into careers and, um, you know, they feel lost, you know, we've been talking about, um, you know, the, the, the place of clarity in being, in being um, 
able to define you know the core of who we are and um, relating it to the mandate um, of um, just understanding what our purpose is as individuals i think one, one of and i want to share very practical examples so that it's things that people can relate with also one of the things that i that I have always done is never to define myself according to my job description. Uh, because we're, we're, you're, you're much more than your job description, right? And this is why a lot of people feel lost. Now, the, the concept of work itself was initiated from the beginning. The concept of work was initiated from the beginning, you know, because um, that is even what the scripture starts with. You know, God started working call things into being and then on the seventh day he rested so the first introduction that we have to the concept of divinity and god himself was a god who was always active who was a god who was always working so work is directly tied and related to the core and the dna of who we are so there is that pull there's that drive and there's um it often happens that people define their personality and the core of who they are in relation to their job description or in relation to the job or the work that they do. For men, for example, and for a lot of people, um, if, you, if, someone is, um, if someone has a job, you know, has somewhere that they go through every morning, they feel fulfilled. They feel as though they're living out their mission. They feel as though they're being, um, they're, they're, being um, they're contributing back to themselves contributing to society, contributing to their family, contributing to the world. Now, when it happens that an individual loses his or her job, it is as though the sum total of who you are has been stripped of you. Where there's lack of um, purpose, there's a lack of identity, there's a lack of self-worth. Now, you're much more than what your job description says because during the course of your, your career um, life, I think I was reading... Um, an article recently that millennials during the course of their life, uh, their, their work careers, would probably change jobs about 10 to 15 times, right? So this is one year here, three years here, five years here, seven years here. So cumulatively, between 12 to 15 years, you will change your, your, your job description. So you, you will change uh, workplaces. That is different from the generation that was before us. Yes. The generation before before us was more of coming into a place and probably retiring there. Yes. <laughs> we, we have a lot of uncles, we have a lot of aunts. Yes. Ever since we were a baby, they were doing one thing. <laughs> We've grown, we've gotten married, we have kids. They're still doing <laughs> You know, so that's where we're coming from. But now millennials are um, adventurous, they're inquisitive, um, they want to explore. So for that person who changes his or her job description 12 to 15 times within their career life, that means that, does that mean that you will take on new identities 12 to 15 times? Now, my question is, and this is a question I'm, pos I'm posing to everyone, if they strip you bare of all your professional nomenclature, everything that has to do with what the professional life confers on you, who are you? When you're able to drill down into who you are, when you're stripped off everything, that is when you can begin to make sense of what, that is when you can begin to make sense of what your purpose is as a leader. And that is when you can begin to understand the concept of clarity. Now, um, my, uh, my introduction, which talks about um, um, helping, young prof helping professionals function effectively at the intersection of passion, purpose, impact, and profit. It's not just a buzzword. It's the sum totality of who I am. Now, that the core of who I am can have different expressions in different organizations. Mm -hmm. So it can, it can express itself with what I'm doing now as Chief Operating Officer at African Development University. It can have its expression somewhere else. It had its expression elsewhere. Now, those organizations that I worked with so let, let, let's, let's picture this. I'm the tree, right? There are different branches. Those organizations are fruits on the branch and on the tree. But the core of who I am remains steadfast and constant. Now, this is, this is something that, it, this is a question that a lot of people need to ask themselves that look, the question number one is, if you're stripped bare of all your professional nomenclatures and professional titles, who, who are you? 
the second question is have you gained clarity about the problems that you're wired to solve so that is that is tiny back to the questions that you're asking which um some people feel lost in organizations like have you really defined what am i wired what problems am i am i wired to solve because everyone is wired to solve specific problems am i solving a instead of solving c so that is why i said clarity is a journey because sometimes you find people who started off, who started who start off on the wrong foot but eventually they, they end up figuring things out but if you to strip yourself of every single thing like on linkedin what you would normally see is the jobs you know where people work and all that but if you were to take that out of the equation how would you define yourself how would you introduce yourself who do you see as who you are because the core and the dna of who you are remains constant all through your lifespan the expressions might be different the organizations might be different the problems that you're solving in different organizations might be different but the core of who you are remains constant i'd like to yield to um <laughs> amazing no but you you've just dropped so much you've just dropped so much and i don't think we can overemphasize that that who you are is a lot more than what you do and it goes back to what Kemi Gukoya said, that you've got to be great at what you are. You can't be great at what you are if you don't know who you are. You've got to know who you are first, all right, and know what you've been called to do, and then you can then manifest. And I, and I also appreciate what you said, that even if your purpose is predetermined and fixed, its expression is different in different areas in different ways, all right? And and it doesn't reduce anything from you, but in all of those expressions, it it's, um, um, it's important that you know you know who you are otherwise you will just live in frustration and a lot of people will live in frustration now because they are doing jobs like you know Kemi said they're comfortable with their jobs the jobs are paying well i see a lot of people like that who are do, they're never happy they're never happy going to work all right they're frustrated not because of the pay but just because of the the fact that they know they're just not where they should be they have big dreams but they know that where they are is sort of caging them holding them down from going forth to fulfill their dreams and that can be really frustrating you know someone said that if your passion is not well channeled it will certainly lead to frustration um uh, so let me bring you to the conversation uh, still on the issue of man i know you're a man that is really keen on vision and that seems to be your specialty on, on on vision and i want you to speak in the broader term now about leadership our, our our leaders get it wrong when vision is not clear you know um you know uh, and how how can i you know um, get a vision or or how can i actually sort of translate my vision into reality i know that's a very very heavy question hey no, no, it, it's actually funny I, honestly i was listening to everybody and my note is literally full that i'm like almost <laughs> nothing i mean we'll say where am i even going to write the rest but it's been amazing listening to all of you and it was starting from um it's just I was as I said earlier I was looking at your diagram about um, some of the values of leadership which you put on your uh, Facebook and um, Instagram post and it's so so powerful um, but you started off on a great note speaking specifically about um, which I term in my post too as well on social construct that that um, as if we all or as predetermined what we are modeling after as leaders um, and I think one of the things we're trying to do here for those who are listening to us is to deconstruct those modeling or what we call mental maps and help you to see correctly what um, the frameworks of where your leadership should be built upon and if you're getting it correctly um, from other demolition it's about building your identity not on job because your job is different from your work i think we need to start to make these distinctions that um, who you are is not just 95 but you are supreme being created to impact as an influence life which is the core of um, definition of leadership and leadership is about influence that you make on people. But stepping back to Kemi again, Ogukoya, is how will you influence people when you don't know who you are, if you can't define yourself, right? And so where vision now comes to play, which is just to answer um, a new question, a previous question, is that vision is a mental big picture of the future, right? Yeah. It kind of ties everything together now because um, Adnamana Johnson was talking specifically about you are not just here now, you are, it's phase out, right? It's phase out. So initially you you get the mental picture of, yeah, this is what I could do. But you're not just thinking you're going to be a leader just like that yet, but you start small, right? You start small. So you get the revelation, the mental clarity, um, and it connects to your your purpose, your passion, 
and your values, which I'll, I'll speak to in a minute. But just recognize that leadership starts with a clear mental picture of who you truly are, of what mm -hmm. you're called to do, and the ability to grow within that frame or mental scope from one level to another to another until you reach um, if I, if the max stage, which I think is the last point we'll make one later about the legacy, is about um, what we call super transcendent leadership. The ability to influence people, not just within your lifetime. After you're gone, you have the ability to still influence people. So you begin to enter the category and leave people like Martin Luther King and Nelson Mandela, where even though they are gone, we still have them influencing us so powerfully. And so that's how your vision can be, can show you so much clarity. But at the bottom of vision now is one core thing. It's, it's, a, it's mental imagery. So one of the things we want to start with today is to help young leaders to understand that what is what is predetermining your mental predisposition? What are the things that you've exposed yourself to before? Um, what forms the image? And that comes to Dr. Nee again, your, your social uh, cognitive aspect. Um, how are you seeing? Because the most important tool to see is not physical eyes. It's a mental picture. It's a mind. So your mind is really powerful in the formation of how you become a leader. Your mind is really powerful in terms of the image. And you are not too far from the image of what has been modeled to you. Many of us try so hard. And this is some of the course of my research primarily because as we begin to see social learning theory, where no matter how much you run away, you've, it has been ingrained in you, right? So we yeah. see cases of people who they are, they are so honest, they go to church, but they still bully their wife and beat their wife in the house because of the social and learning that has been impacted in them from their parents or what they've been seeing around them, right? So over time, they can change those things. They can do better because they're trying, but they've not reconstructed, re rewired their setup to help them, you know, establish their training. And so first and foremost, your vision will help you recognize your passion because it emerges from a mindset and what you're really passionate about. But you, if you miss, you'll miss it because passion is out of what you like. It's for you, right? It's for you. It's, it's coming out of you. It's what you really tend towards. But add on top of that now is your purpose, right? Because your passion now comes from your heart, but your purpose determines what you deliver to the people, yeah. right? Because your purpose is bigger than you. Your purpose is, is it's not just what you do in, in small phases or small sphere. Your purpose is who you truly are, your identity. And I'll put that on top. The third layer now is the opportunity or the value you can create with both your passion, your purpose, and the space that God has given to you to operate within that, that arena. And so with all of these things put together, your vision giving you the ability to spot those three things, and you starting with the opportunity you get, your passion combined together, the purpose you can create, and building on that over and over again. I think it's really, really powerful. And I think it also touches on what Kevin was saying about um, discovery, deploy, and develop. Because you cannot, as a person, I think it's really important for, before I hand over to Dr. Nhi again, it's, it's so important to know that you cannot um, do without developing mm -hmm. ability to grow and to, to, to demand growth from yourself. And whenever you mention growth, just always put back there is change, right? Because mm -hmm. if you want to grow, the caveat there now is the desire to change. And it's not easy. It's not easy to to address or to arrest some of the challenges or, or social milieu that has been exposed to us right now to tell our parents that what they taught us was not right and we trying to do that takes a lot of work it takes a lot of effort but we can accomplish it. and i think by the time we're finishing today we'll be able to to get some some tools to help us accomplish that thank you amazing wow wow that was loaded 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 stuff you know vision is really key i like what you talked about mental imagery um, um you know mental imagery um amazing amazing you know someone said that it's only the future that you can picture that you would feature and that's not that's not motivational stuff that's that's true you know you you cannot manifest a future that you have not seen before you know one of these olympic um, um champions um, um is olympic um, ski champions in the winter winter olympics he, he said that he said that before each Olympic Games, before each race, I've run the race in my mind a hundred times. I know every bend. If you go ask Lewis Hamilton, the, the Formula One driver from the UK for um, Mercedes, you know, he will tell you that he knows every bend. You know, there's no surprise, all right? Because there's a mental picture already of where, of, you know, 
And that's really important. And I see that a lot of people get it wrong. A lot of people get it wrong. Florence Chadwick was a woman who, the first woman to swim across the English Channel. The first time she tried swimming across the English Channel from England to France, she got close to the finish line before she gave up. And when she gave up and you know raised her raised her hand so that she was she could be extracted from the water into the boat, she said it was so painful. The water was cold. It was like sharp dark, you know, stabs everywhere. But she got into the boat and was really surprised that she was just a few hundred meters away from the finish line. She said she, she lifted up her face to see. Her mom was screaming, "You're almost there!" But she said she couldn't see it. It was so there was so much fog that morning that she could not see the finish line. So the next time she started from the finish line. She went to see the finish line, walked around it, you know, got on the boat, had a feel of it. So she went back and tried this time around. And this time around, even though it, it was still painful, it was still stressful, she had a lot of lactic acid in her muscles and she was fatigued. She just saw herself crossing the line. All right. And, and that's really important. You know, in neuroscience, we say this, that when you every time you see yourself achieving the goal, every time you have that vision and you play it in your mind, you release dopamine in your brain, which is the reward, you know, from the reward centers. And what dopamine does is to reduce stress. Dopamine reduces stress levels. That's why a marathon runner can keep running, you know, 40K marathon. They, 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 it hurts. You know, I don't run marathon. I don't think I can even try it. Well, not now, but it would hurt. But what keeps you going is the vision of the end. All right, now, I don't want to start preaching now, but I, I hope you'll get it. You know, I just wanted to sort of expand share of what you said there. You know, and, and thank, thanks, Kendi, for putting that up. You need to demand growth from yourself. Growth means change. Absolutely. Growth means change. Now, before we go on, I know that some of our panelists will be leaving at different times. So, um, guys, we, we understand and we expect that that will happen. So, please, anytime, you guys, just, just signal me when you're ready to go. We'll continue with the conversation. Before we go ahead, one of the things I do is to give other people you know, an opportunity to show themselves. So one of my mentees is here. Her name is Omo. So all of you watching, our, our panelists and our guests, everyone watching on YouTube, Facebook, I've got Omo here. Omo is like, you know, she's a, you know, I don't know, she's a darling, okay? She's a wonderful lady. She's one of my mentees. Um, and she met me at the beginning of the year. I did some you know, sessions, uh, mentoring sessions about goal setting. And one of our goals was to start um, uh, sort of a production where she would get people to tell their stories. So she, she, she initially studied journalism. She's here in Australia. She lives in Australia. She studied journalism. And she's interested in telling other people's stories. So almost God's going to come up. Um, for a few minutes, just to tell us what she our project is, what are you know, um, what is all about, and how we can watch it. Okay, so before I bring Omar up, I'm just going to play a promo, like a like a clip from you know what she's put together. Okay, and then we'll bring up Omar. Okay, so all the panelists stay behind. You know, this is what we're talking about. This is all about leadership. All right, I'll bring this up now. Life. The lowest moment of my life has to be post my graduate study as a nurse. So for my lowest point of my life would have to be when I was sick. He was gone I think for a month and I'd lost 20 kilos when he got back. One of my lowest moments in life was when I was in the university. I didn't feel anything when I saw him. Do I love my dad? I don't know. Do I love my mom? I don't know. I just don't have any emotions. And I'm trying to look for that emotion. After, it was like a loud bang. Like just so loud. Like I can even, it's scary because sometimes I can hear it, right? And it's just this Wow, amazing. Omar, you're welcome. Amazing. Backstory, backstory. Everyone has a story. So Omar, tell us quickly the inspiration behind this and then, then tell us how we can, you know, work this and connect with this. Um, so basically I just got a nudge to tell stories of other people. Um, I believe that everyone has a story and I believe that for everybody's story, there's someone out there that can connect to your story. And you know, if they can hear your story, it can help them to 
feel like, oh, I'm not alone in this. Someone else has gone through it. Someone else feels the way that I feel. You know what I mean? So yeah, that was, that's basically what backstory is about. It's just telling people's story and helping other people to be inspired by other people's stories, if, if you know what I mean. Um, and these stories don't have to be like, you know, back, sorry. These stories don't have to be like, you know, bad stories or sad stories. It could really be from the lowest moment of your life or it could be like the greatest moment of your life or it could be the best thing that has ever happened to you. Just, you know, everybody else. You know, just telling your story, something you think any, somebody else would be able to relate to. Um, that's basically what this, the backstory is about. And it will be on my platform. It will be on my YouTube channel. It will be on um, Dr. Nee's YouTube channel as well. It will be on Changemakers International in on Facebook. Um, yeah, that's what I think. That's where I think it would be right now. I, I don't know if Dr. Nee has other things there. Uh, no, 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 and, and maybe what else? Maybe this can become a movie. You never know. <laughs> um, thank, you for us. thank you for joining us. I, I thank yes. you for for persisting with this and you know telling. I see that you're really passionate, almost camera shy. I, I, I've known her for a few years now, so I've actually forced her to come here. All right. Um, so I'm not sure. Have you done this before? Have you been on the like, you know, camera like No, before? I don't do it. Yes, I know, I know. So I forced her to come here. All right, but you know what? She likes to interview people. She likes to sit behind the camera, and you know, get other people to tell their stories. So she's found what she really likes doing. All right, and I hope that this will go bigger. I hope that one day you will write, you will tell, help, you know, you will tell, you will do documentaries, you know, big documentaries, Oscar-winning documentaries. Amen. Okay helping people tell their stories. And the good thing about backstory is that backstory is not about any celebrity or influencer or thought leader. Exactly. They just have people. Most of the people, they are Australians, okay? Because she lives in Australia. So, you know, most of them are Australian, you know, Australians, just telling their everyday stories, okay, of inspiration and grace. Thank you, Omar. God bless you. All right. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you for cool. having me. No worries. Wow, amazing. And also, before we go on to the next um, um, aspect of the conversation, we're going to be giving out 20 free books, autographed books, all right, raised, um, yeah, raised, I think, um, by, um, raised, raised by Mama, built by Abba, raised by Mama, built by Abba, yes. <laughs> a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. I've received a copy of that book, I think, a few months ago when I reviewed it for Wura, an amazing person as well. So Wura will be joining us as well, just to talk about our book, um, uh, I just like to get other people the opportunity to show, show showcase what they're doing. Okay, so we're all joining us as well. But let's 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 just go in um, to the next um, um, aspect of our conversation. Uh, and by the way, backstory will be premiering on the 14th of June. On the 14th of June, on my YouTube channel, on Chainmakers International, and it'll also be on Omo, Omo Belo's YouTube channel. So just search Omo Belo. You know, it'll also be on our YouTube channel, and I think it'll be on, on Instagram as well. All right, good. So back to leadership common mistakes that young leaders make common mistakes that young leaders make i think i'll go back to kemi gukoya now it's been a while i heard your voice um and i think we i want us to talk about you know messaging you know now let's assume there, there are people out there who have clear clarity about what they need to do all right you know they, they know okay this is what i should be doing okay yeah maybe my career doesn't align what i'm doing but now i think i i know who i am i am finding myself right now all right i just don't know how to articulate it all right or they're articulating it in the wrong way or they're not aligning their message with their mandates all right and i see a lot of people because of financial pressure for example i see a lot of people alter what they're supposed to be doing because of financial pressure and they tell you, you know what, <laughs> do you think it's easy? It's easy for you to say, yeah, after all, you're in Australia. It's easy. It's easy for you to say. Of course, they look at the end product. They look at the journey. They don't know that, you know, uh, there was a journey there. But what, what do you say to this? And how, how can we deal with this? All right. Thank you very much. So I think Omar really got me emotional with that video. <laughs> I haven't even um, seen the full video. So I don't know what I will become when I see the full video. <laughs> but I think that's so, 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 so incredible. Well done, Omar. And, you know, it, it leads me to the question you just asked about message. And a lot of times I think there's this misconception um, around how we actually put out the message because of you know the narrative that you see around messaging so one thing you mentioned when you spoke about the backstory was that you know these are regular people right these are regular people with regular stories 
uh, positive, negative, however the case may be. But when we talk about the expression of our own message, it always doesn't have to be, um, you know, that we're breaking our backs. So we're on YouTube right now, and we're sharing this message with the entire world. You know, I don't think it has caused an arm and a leg. So we have to first be very clear about who is our audience, you know, who needs this message, and how can we find them based on the resources available to us. Um, I think when we get to that point where we can actually expand our minds and we can tap into our resourcefulness, we would find a lot of ways for expression. So there are some people who, for example, have a great mandate, they have a message, and they have the alignment. And, you know, they're just fine on WhatsApp groups, right? And from that WhatsApp group, they are transmitting their messages to the world. It doesn't always have to be that you're on, you know, radio or you get on CNN. I think there's that, there, there, there's a, there's a um, misunderstanding really around how best to put out our message because you think someone else is putting it out in a particular way. We have to get to the root of who we are, you know, and be very frank with ourselves. However, one thing I also advocate is being able to tap into the place of resourcefulness, right? Because when we get resourceful, we'll find creative ways for expression. So sometimes, you know, you want to put out your message to the world. Who do you know? Who can you collaborate with, okay, to get this message out? Um, would it just be about, oh, I have to get 100000 I have to get, you know, $3,000 to do this? What existing structures and systems can you leverage on? Understanding that the whole essence of the expression of this message, this mandate, this purpose of yours, is not for show off. If we take the, if, if we redirect the attention, if we if redirect the purpose, then there will be a lot of stress on us. You know, because we're trying to impress and then you're trying to become who you're not or you're trying to, you know, copy another person's expression. What works for you, right? What works for you? There are a lot of channels out there. YouTube, you know, I said everybody is a media house on YouTube. You can start up a channel and then you can broadcast to the world. You can mm. start on WhatsApp. You can start on, well, I don't know, uh, Nigeria just banned Twitter now, so I was going to say Twitter, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but then there's so many ways of expression. There are so many models of expression. Um, and while even putting out this message, one thing that I, I think, you know, the over-reliance of, of technology has done now is it's making us let go of some of the conventional ways that we, we you know, share our messages. So we have inner circles, you know, we have places of worship. Yeah, I think uh, we've got a problem with the network there. While we're trying to get that, so for Kevin will come back to us. Um, well, you, know, well, uh, you know, can you speak to this as well? You know, you know, messaging, getting the message right. Oh. Um, I, I, I knew in my spirit that I was going to come up next. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could feel it. So, um, Okay, hopefully um, Kemi comes back to join us. Um, so if you, if you nuggets, I like breaking down concepts into you know nuggets that people can um, can take away. So quick one, you know what, what people really call luck is simply preparation meeting opportunity. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of defining the core of our message, we need to understand that the message comes before the platform. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are anxious about seeking the platforms first without really defining the core of their messaging. I'm going to talk briefly about the, the power of purpose statements and how that reflects and how that relates to us as, as individuals. And I want to break it down this way. When you think about Apple and how Apple started in terms of its marketing, marketing strategy, they defined the core of who they are on just two words, think different. Yes. And through that, they were able to build a movement. There was one ad you know, that they showed you know, where they were showing the great people that had lived before. And they were like, you know what, if Einstein was around you know, in this day and age, he probably would be using an Apple, Apple device. So think different. When you think about Apple, what you hear is thinking different. 
when you think about Nike, two words, three words, just do it. Yeah. Right? Just do yeah. it. So let's bring it down to myself now. I've been able to craft my message around three words, elevate your game. To such an extent that some people probably do not even know what my name is anymore. But when you hear <laughs> elevate your game, it's <laughs> synonymous with the person Onida Mula Johnson. And I've been very strategic about that. My programs evolve around elevate your game. My message revolves, about, revolves around elevate your game. My book that I you know, offered in 2019 was even titled Elevate Your Game. So it has become a rallying call. It has become a defining statement. It has become my, you know, my purpose statement. Now, when you go into organizations, you find their mission statements you know, you know, on the wall, their vision statements. That forms the, the core and the DNA of who they are as an organization. Mm. So the question that I'm going to ask is that as an individual, have you been able to define the core of your purpose statements? Have you been able to define, if you were to drill down the core of your message into just two words, into just three words, what will it be? You know, I was reading somewhere that um, if, if you cannot explain what you do to a five-year-old child and, you know, he or she gets it, you probably don't have a clue what you're doing yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so uh, we, we, yes, we want to push this um, huge narratives, you know, these um, fantastic um, theories and concepts, but how are you able to drill it down? How are you able to connect it to the core of who you are? And again, I'm just going to wrap up with this, that the, the truth is that capacity trumps titles. You know, it's really yeah. not about the, um, the aliases at the end of your name, right? It's about the capacity mm -hmm. that you have. Um, mm -hmm. I'll yield to other speakers now. Uh, Kemi, we'll have you back now. Kemi, look at you, Okay, you wanna... sorry. I was yeah, going to say just when I... When I spoke about Twitter and then I, I went over. <laughs> they got you. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry, but I'm glad to be back. And so I'll, I'll just wrap up, you know, in a few seconds about that. So it's about, you know, what, what, what's, what's, you're, you're clear about the message. Find the best expression. Do not shy away from, you know, starting from wherever you are. The most important thing is that you're able to pass that message across to the next person, you know, who's able to pass on to the next person and just ensure that we don't break that chain. We don't break that chain of expression. We don't break that chain of ensuring that the message becomes viral. And most importantly, the message gets to the people who need the message the most. So it's not about the sophistication. You know, it's not about the sophistication. Let's focus on the message and then let's focus on the best way you know, to express the, the delivery of that message. So I'll, I'll, I'll stop on that. Great, 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 great. Okay, let me go to Kemiri now. Kemiri, what, what do you, and you can actually, because the message and the methods actually sort of go hand in hand. And I think we're already making, you know, but what we're seeing here is that you've got to get your message right before you determine what methods, you know, you would em employ, all right? Once you get your mandate right, you, you need to be sure about your message all right, and then you can then pick out your methods. So I like what uh, Mr. Johnson said about, you know, having the message before the platform. Hmm. So for me, it's about, you need to be really clear about your messaging. You need to be that authority. You need to be clear that this is my core area. So I'm a leadership expert. I don't talk about anything else but leaders, leadership. I stay in my lane. I sparkle in my lane. And I think one of the things I would say is your message has a voice, okay? And if, for example, I'm, I'm a leadership expert and my voice, everything I say speaks that same language. So that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in that lane. I'm speaking one language. Obviously, you know, this is what I'm meant to be doing and I'm staying there and I'm doing it. Now, the minute I divert, or go into other things, which tends to happen with a lot of young people. So, oh, I don't really like what I'm doing. I think it's not as nice. I think it's not as, there's no money there, or I think it's not as exciting. And therefore I'm just gonna venture into something else. And that's where we get, we go wrong. Because when I say your, your message has a voice, I'm a leadership expert. So whoever I'm speaking to would hear me, whoever I'm called to, would hear the language, it will resonate with them. So everything I'm saying will, will, will be communicated very clearly. The minute I go off 
off my message, right? Everything I'm saying will not resonate because you're not, you're not, that's not where you're meant to be. So I'm meant to be, like I said, that leadership expert. The minute I decide, oh, actually, I actually fancy being, I don't know, a, a teacher or something else. Everything I say would not resonate with the people because I'm not called to those people and that's not where I'm meant to be. So the thing for me about messaging is really ensuring that you're speaking the language of where you are meant to be. You're sparkling in that area of authority and you're emitting words that resonate with the people that you're called to. Because not only do you have a message, but you are sent to a specific type of people. And you need to be able to connect with those people. So where are they? What do they do? Where can I find them? Where can I make sure that anything I'm saying resonates with the people that I'm sent to? Because again, don't forget, if you're sent to a certain people and you're not speaking to those people, wherever you're speaking will not be, you won't be heard. So it'll just be noise. It's a bit like, you know, when you're tuning the radio for a frequency, so you're, you're trying to get to a station and before you get there, there's a lot of noise. That's what it will sound like when you begin yeah. to speak in an area that you're not called to. So you're going to be speaking noise. So people, you'll be speaking, but people will be hearing noise because that's not your message and you're not actually connecting with the right people. So that's Absolutely. what I like about message. Message. Uh, can, can I just, can I just yes. add something quickly to yes. it? Yes. Um, ju just building on, on what um, Kemi has shared, um, I think it's also important to understand that if if you really haven't been able to articulate your message before an audience of one, you probably will not be able to do it before a larger audience. Now, who is this audience of one that I'm talking about yourself? I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. The Bible says that if the clouds be full of rain, right, it would do what? It would empty itself. Now, there's this simple analogy that I used to give. Hold up a mirror and blow air on it. What would happen? Moist will begin to form on the surface, right? Mm -hmm. You would blow it to such a level that water will begin to trickle down. Mm. If the clouds be full of rain, once I define my message and I keep saying it in the place of reaching out to just one person, what am I doing? I'm filling up my clouds. Mm -hmm. The same way that I'm talking in front of a mirror and in such a way that mist will begin to form and it will get to a state that it will begin to trickle down. As I'm articulating my message internally and speaking it to myself in the place of quietness. For example, before, before David got to the level of being able to slay Goliath, he had experimented yeah. the lion and the bear mm -hmm. in the place of quietness in the place that nobody was there so being with being with goliath was the public spectacle was a public show but that, that was not that was not the first time that that was going to happen he had right he had he had in in quotes identified and articulated that messaging internally and when the platform presented itself when the opportunity presented itself it was really a reflection of who he, who he was you know on the inside already so like i said it's important to internalize your message articulate it clearly to an audience of one which is yourself then when the stage is set it becomes easy to connect with um, thousands and thousands of people as kemi said because your message has a voice thank you very much Absolutely. your message has a voice and you, you you know i just you know you know all that we're saying is just sort of um you know um, we're just like building building you know building the foundation building the foundation of what should be you know, um, um, real successful leadership. Because one of the biggest problems we have in the world today is the lack of visionary leadership, leadership that is not about the people. Over the last two weeks, I think I have spent, I don't know how many hours I've spent on YouTube watching the videos of the 2008 financial crisis. So I decided to watch about, I think I've watched between, in the last three days, I watched about six different videos on the 2008 financial crisis from different angles because everyone had their own story to tell, including the banking industry, all right? And I, what I see there is just the failure of leadership, failure of leadership. Uh, and, 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 and leadership is everything in the words of John Maxwell. Leadership is everything. We rise to, you know, you cannot rise above the level of your leadership. 
and uh, and that's that, that's one of the biggest problems. And that's why we're here to analyze these problems and to see how we can solve them. I'm going to bring on Shane she now, but I want us to sort of start moving on. Um, and I, I want you to speak to you know you know the methods and probably start getting into the manner of leadership, you know, the style of leadership, you know the mistakes that young people make when it comes to this area which of course can become problematic um can become problematic for us because if we don't understand you know people get lost i think one of the mistakes and i want to to speak to this is that sometimes we we go from aspiring leaders young leaders do not want to go through the process they are much more interested in the outcome I see a lot of people who reach out to me and say, oh, you know, how, how can I do what you do? Let's even bring it to, the, to, to, to medicine. I see a lot of doctors who arrive in Australia and and they want to stay in Sydney, the big city, and work there and have a private practice. And they, they were not there when I was living with a Pakistani guy smell, with the smell of curry. He almost killed me with curry every day because I couldn't afford rent. <laughs> All right, I'll share the house with him. You know, Pakistani curry is different from Indian curry, I can tell you that. Every night, full of, you know, my body was smelling of curry every day. All right? You know, they were not there, you know, when uh, when I, I went to the bush, I was working in the bush, where with my wife, I uh, was married, there was no honeymoon. We couldn't afford that honeymoon. You know, we had to, we had to, I'm telling you, our school fees, our initial school fees was on credit card. 21% interest rates. All right? <laughs> they were not there when, I, when I, I bought my first car, not realizing that they scammed me with the insurance. And what I was paying in insurance, was weird. <laughs> they were not there when, you know, I'm telling you, when I, I moved from hospital to hospital, from village to village, from place to place serving, the days where I felt like I was not going to do it anymore, I was going to give up, I was going to, you know, those days when I didn't feel like getting up and out of my bed, just because those days when, uh, you know, I was doing this money transfer, and one woman, the woman called me one day and said, me, what's going on? You will not solve all the problems in Nigeria. She realized that the amount of money I was sending every fortnight, because we were paid every fortnight. Once I get my salary, I go do money transfer. Those days, you have to go to a shop. That was the, that was the day I became an agent. Because I realized that she had all my history of what I was sending. So I said, okay, I'm going to be a real money agent. So I also became a money agent. So I can send my own money. I can and also put money. <laughs> but they were not there. But so they see me now with my BMW driving, using. And everything, and you were not there when I was driving an old Subaru mm. that we have to jump start mm. process. So sometimes people, you know, just you know, oh, uh, you know, and sure, I want you to speak to that because that's part of the you know the methods, you know, uh, you know, and and I think we need to talk and emphasize the importance of submitting ourselves to process and starting with what we have and just 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 not being too you know carried away. Let me tell you, I just joined the gym. And there's this one big guy in the gym, this white guy who <laughs> intimidated. This is my first time of really going to the gym. I, I have to tell my personal trainer that I won't be coming again. Because the guy right there in front of you, he will come, he will come down uh, uh, with all the muscles. And I'm like, I'm the fattest in the gym. I'm the I told the, I told the lady, oh, I will stop going. She said, No, you have to keep going there. Can't keep walking, keep walking. Don't look at them. So I said, Okay, you know what? All I need to do is to beat my personal best. There's no way I'm not going to be like this one that are on steroids and are, you know, oppressing every, people every day. Mm. I just walk my own journey. She will speak to that before, before yeah, I go. No, absolutely. Thank you. I, I'm just listening to the, your narrative, and it's actually true. It's what, what has, so let me even take a step back. Some of the things, as I, as I was narrating earlier, like we're talking about leadership now, some of us really were, it's accidental, but over the course of the years, I've really taking time to really examine, you know, to really look at people that are leaders and the formation process. And it, 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 it surprised me to see how much behind the scene work and labor and effort went into just one single activity in the front. As I'm, you know, what I was saying, you know, there, there's so much, are you talking to that first person, that you first, before people? So what I, what I began to realize, I, this generation, our generation, and those coming behind, they don't want to follow process. The, the ignorance of the principles, and when we say principles, universal laws that guide the way things are being done, our connectivity and association with those things are not there. 
And mm. so it just startles me because I look, so let me put it in, in context. I, I studied Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela. I literally know a lot about all these people, for in, uh, which I researched in my book. And it's just out of this passion to just really get to piece the line together that got me into all of this research. And I'm looking at people like um, um, Mother Teresa. Um, I studied Helen Keller. Um, um, it, it just a lot of them like that. And I was beginning to realize that they literally um, started from not literally nothing they, they were working let me just put it is the passion which is the error now we're going to the, the manner is the desire to serve it is the, yeah. the commitment to deliver and but back to the message i was saying it's not about the the um multitude or the activity or the jamboree that's around it but it's about first and foremost understanding the principles understanding the processes involved and ready to commit yourself to it and then that giving you the opportunity to eventually come into the limelight to serve. The word service is critical because not not having not desiring to serve will cap your expansion because expansion is inherent in service. And so all of these things are counterintuitive to our generation. Our generation don't want to serve. We just want to get there. We want to like the Rene was saying. We want to see in the BMW. But to pay the price of BMW, there is a process to it. There is an event, an activity that guides it. So number one, the lack of understanding of process, lack of understanding of principle that guided, and lack of, of, of knowing the passion that is required to fuel that particular activity. And I'm saying this in a broader term because we're talking to a broad audience here today. We're talking to both people that are young who are just beginning to understand who they are, you know, and they're like, oh, where do I? And there are people who are really a little bit intermediate in their leadership call. But what we are talking about here is number one, Find the means to serve. Find the means to serve. Whether it's a platform or not, look for opportunity to, to give to people. Look for opportunity to, to deliver what you have. So start with your passion first. For your passion, following your purpose, looking for that stage to really give out to people. And I wanted to mention something that somebody was saying earlier. And this, this really is painful to me more so because, um, again, it's part of the uh, misconstrue or the destruction of our value system where people are saying, profit matter over people no it is people before profit right it is the, because people are the ones that run everything so once you begin to follow about um the profit or in quote institution and you are ignoring the individuals that actually run this institution then something is missing so mm -hmm. what you want to do what we want to establish here first and foremost is to place the right value on people place the right value on 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 lives I always tell people where in, within our, our my circles and as a pastor in our local church, livestock people are way better than stock market. They will always, people will always yield returns for you way beyond how much you can gain, whatever money investment you make, because investment is within your lifetime. But the investment you make in lives, they'll continue to yield returns even after you're passed away. Yeah. So leadership must recognize above everything else, it is the call to serve the people. Is a call to elevate lives. It's a call to a higher mandate. And as young leaders are starting today, we want to encourage you to first and foremost understand the process of how leaders leadership is being made. Understand the fact that they sacrifices. Remove your mind first and foremost from the profit because if you, if you serve effectively, profit is guaranteed to follow. Profit will come. I'm you know, I was talking about um, 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 Steve Jobs, who is one of the, my research candidates recently. And we're beginning to realize they they emerge as we were saying out of a call out of a need i, I was wondering this um NSAS and um, program and i i'm hoping some great leaders will emerge from this event because this is a this is our call to leadership right mm -hmm. similar thing that occurred in 1972 1969 into 1972 and when um steve jobs and and his friend then um steve wozniak were putting together the idea and people will not know what stared of their passion and as um, as you saying, think differently um actually the first word was to amplify human ability but technology became their platform to do that they didn't start because they were tech boss in fact many of you know i'm sure you already know yes it was a tech whiz but steve jobs was just a marketer in reality but what fueled his passion was a call was a need to a service and the opportunity to give beyond what he had to really answer what the need was at that time so what they realized, and I wrote in my book, you have to, you can read the Power Vision book, I documented the journey. They were inspired by the fact that these, these people are doing something bad, the government then. They were suppressing their voices. They were trying to make them feel like they don't know what they're doing, young people then. 
but they realized that it got to a point where they had to as, a, 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 attend to this. So they use technology at their own means. And that's why they're very rebellious. They didn't follow the status quo. They didn't go the way people were going, but they understood the process. They had a passion. They had a reason. They had a call. They were ready to sacrifice using different methods. And they will tell you they started in the garage of Steve Jobs making all this equipment. And over time, they followed precept upon precept, principle upon principles, passion upon passion, purpose upon purpose. Just the build up process that precedes the breakthrough is something that we must not miss because it's the manner. And through that, now, as I wrap up now, yeah, hand over to somebody else, you build soft skills. You build, um, we are in a, in a system now. And, and I want to say this. I leave the penny touches on your responsible leadership and the theory because that was my research my master's program when i got to school was about um about a failure of the crisis financial crisis so one of the research they asked us to do was to figure out why the financial crisis occurred and what we found out was again profit over people it was irresponsible leadership and so that led us to all of this mini leadership type we're talking about now which is um sovereign leadership transformation and leadership but what I wanted to really bring out there ultimately is to recognize the fact that um, there will be platforms that God has prepared in front of you. And for you to recognize the fact that you have to desire first and foremost to want to place the, the opportunity to serve and to mm -hmm. give up what you are and what you have over and beyond, you know, um, the profit or the recompense that will come back to you. I think that is so, so fundamental. I, I'm kind of missing my thought here around it, but I hope I've been able to communicate effectively on that point that you should be able to serve. Service is just the key thing among everything else. Thank you. That, that's it. That's it. Thank you so much. You know, mm -hmm. thank you so much. You know, if you don't serve, how how can you lead? Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 you know, how can you lead? Uh, and I, I don't think we can overemphasize that because that's sort of the key the key thing there, you know, is that, you know, the service, service is really, really, really essential. And the call to leadership is a call to service. I know in Damalao, we live in very soon. So in Damalao, I'd like you to see one or two things um, before I bring up Wura um, up on stage here. But, you know, do you want to speak to this? Because I'm not sure what your timing is, but I'd like you to, you know, empty your soul before you go. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I think are you muted? Yes, you're muted. Yes, yes. Um, I'd like to say thank you so much um, for for the platform. Um, it's it's um, it's it's been um, a very um, exciting time. I've learned as much as I've I've shared. Um, th this is this is just a charge to um, people out there because I, I'm I'm conscious of the fact that. Uh, it's not just young people that we have here. Um, we have um, um, different you know, people from different ages. And um, it's, it's best to understand that, um, like, um, you know, Sean said at, at the beginning, leadership is all about influence. And um, again, it starts from, it, it, it starts, it start, th 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 there needs to be a phase, there needs to be a process. And um, for me, what I've also realized is that um, every phase connects to each other. You know, sometimes we, we go through different seasons in our lives, we go through different phases and we're like, you know, everything seems disjointed. You know, it's like, you know, it's scattered at the end of the day. But the truth is you get to a certain level and you look back and then you discover that there were connecting dots, mm. you know, connecting those seemingly disjointed, you know, pieces and just bringing it back as a masterpiece, which the creator made it to be initially. So irrespective, you know, so um, your, your career path might not just be one smooth sail, you know, just going straight ahead. There might be different twists and turns, you know, going through valleys, you know, climbing up the mountain, things like that, swimming through the river and all that. But eventually everything connects, everything connects, you know. So for, for, for the young professional or for the professional who is also wondering that, um, this is what I want to be in the future. This is what I walk. This is what I want to walk towards. And this is I'll just wrap, wrap up my conversation here. A lot of things. So this is what I share with people that I you know speak with. A lot of times we plan. We plan from now into the future, right? Mm -hmm. We sit down here and we try to project. You know where we're going to be in the next ten years, in the next fifteen years, in the next twenty years. So what I often tell people is I do a reverse. I picture where do I want to be in the next thirty years. 
what skills do I need to have? Who do I need to know? What do I need to be doing in the next 30 years? I document that. Then I walk back. I walk backwards. Where do I want to be in the next 20 years? What skills do I need to have? What experience do I need to get that would connect me to the next 30 years? I write that down. I walk backwards again. What do I need to be doing in the next 15 years? What do I need to know? What do I need to have? Who, sh who should I be talking to? To guarantee the next 20 years. I'm not even talking about the next 30 years now. I write that down. I walk backwards. What do I need to be doing in the next 10 years that will guarantee the next 15 years? The same process, I walk backwards. What do I need to be doing in the next five years to guarantee the next 10 years? I walk backwards again. What do I need to be doing in the next two years that will guarantee the next five years? I walk backwards again. What am I doing now to guarantee the next two years? So with breaking this down, I'm not worried about the next 30 years because I know that if I stay the course, if I'm doing what I'm doing now to lead me to the next two years and I'm faithful with it and I'm consistent with it, by default, I'm going to get to the next 30 years. So the next 30 years is not like an abstract thing that I'm just trying to, anyway, one, one day, one day, shall, shall get there. No, there's a process behind it and there are specific steps that I'm taking. So I've, list, I've, I've walked backwards from 30 years up, up, up to now. I'm not here today trying to picture what um, I should be doing the next 30 years because I've walked backwards. All I need to do is ensure that what I need to do, where I need to be in the next two years, I'm doing it from now. And when I get to the next two years, what's the next goal? What do I need to be doing the next five years? And by the time you follow that process, the journey of growth becomes exciting. It's not a mini, 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 more father as a doggy kind of thing. Um, and just um, throwing different things in the air, hope, hoping one thing sticks. Even though the way I've put it, that is not to still say that it's going to be a smooth sale. But what I have come to know at the end of the day is, irrespective of how disjointed our journey might be, there are connecting dots that connect one phase to another season, to another stage. And at the end of the day, everything comes back you know, wrapped up beautifully, like that masterpiece that it's meant to be. Wow, amazing. Well, thank you so much, Inda Mala. I know you've got to go, but that's a very good way to wrap it up, you know, starting yes, from the beginning and then walking back. And in fact, that's what God does, isn't it? That's actually revelation. All right, revelation is, a, you know, a, a picture of the future, really. All right, oh. and, and and then walking it back, you know, oh. with sort of spoil you on so that oh. you can exactly what you need and you're not just shadow boxing all right mm -hmm. um, before we go on to the next uh, we're running up now for the next um, 10 15 minutes but before we go on i want to bring up Rura Rusha there Rura um is one i've got to know through uh, my wonderful friend um Samuel and i'm sure a lot of us know Samuel and I. I can't talk highly enough of this guy you know <laughs> who else who i met on facebook you know <laughs> uh, I'm sure he's somewhere now, but when he watches this, he will realize this. I've been watching his videos for so many months. And then just after that, we started the church. And I thought, who would be the first person that I would invite to the church? I said, it would be Samuel Ekundaya. So I called him up and I said, I want you in my church. And so he flew down from Auckland to Sydney. And it was an amazing weekend. He stayed in our house, not in a hotel. He stayed in my house, and that was how we just we just kicked it off. An amazing, amazing man. All righty. So Wura would be um, um, Wura's just written a book. All right, and then I want to talk about this book. We are giving out twenty copies, twenty autographed copies of this book today. All right, we're giving it out twenty copies of this book today. Today, and I, and um, because I'm so busy. I think it will be off to Bura how this happens. So what I would um, suggest, I'm not sure whether Tokumi has had a conversation with Bura about how this will be. Let me let me bring Bura up right now. Bura, you're welcome. Hi, Dr. Nigi. Yeah, congratulations on, on your book. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. All right. I know you are, you know, this is very, what time is it right now in the US where you are, your city? It says 5.29. I mean, the same same time zone as uh, Mr. Shemon in here. 5.29. Wow. God bless you. You know, this is what we experience usually. Sometimes when I wake up, I think, 
to, to this day, I had to speak at Bank of Williams's program, and I had to wake up at 4 a.m. to speak. So thank you for joining us where I came. I'm going to bring up the book. Do you want to tell us about your book? All right, just very quickly. That's thank the book. you so once again. Amazing, amazing session. And um, I was really looking forward to all the things we had to say today about uh, leaders and how God um, brings leaders up and raises leader. I think the core of the book really, while it tells my story, is saying that we can always do more with less. Um, we've heard so many things saying, what, what is it that you even have at hand today? And while mine tells my story from the perspective of a child that grew up in a single parent, so we could be anything for anyone, um, but the core of it is that we can do more um, with even whatever we have. Because I see that the narratives many times is we tend to um, put a roof over ourselves because of what um, whatever has happened, the country we are born into, you know, one sentence that brings in my mind is that the fact that the, the thoughts of a third world um, native is di definitely different from that of a first world native. And um, we just kind of like put a, a, a ceiling over our heads, over our minds because of where we're born, um, the school we went to, the parents we had, the homes we were raised into. And it's just saying that what we can we can do more with what we have. And I love that um, Mr. Indomola was talking about this masterpiece and um, that we are born to be. And the books just highlights us as a masterpiece in the hand of the master builder, who irrespective of what happens to us, where we have been, what we have been through, is able to bring everything together um, to that perfect image he had in mind. And uh, also that nothing nothing reduces our giftings, nothing um, reduces who we've called to be. Um, the potential in us will always be there. And um, the core of our responsibility is to ask, how do I connect the dots? Um, how do I... Um, what principles do I need? Because like they say, success leaves clues. And I'm happy we are here to get some of those clues today. So that's that's really the core of the message, doing more with whatever we have at hand and not Amazing. stealing our lives off. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. And once again, it's, it's a big deal writing a book. Thank you for putting your story down there. And I'm sure it's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a big, big blessing to so many people. I shared it some time ago when I wrote my book, Navigating Change. Um, I, I think I put this, you know, one day, and I got very emotional because that day I came from work, it was a busy day. And this woman, a Greek woman in her 70s, called me up and she got my details through my secretaries and said, I just found your book. I've got a 45 year old um, daughter who has multiple sclerosis, who is wheelchair bound, too fed, you know, I've cared for all her life. She's, you know, she she can't, she's disabled. And I just was giving up. I, I had no hope. I'm in my 70s. How, how long will I do this for? Where will she leave when I'm gone? She said, but when she just read my book and she was in tears, she said, thank you for, you know, I was just, I said, God, I thank you. If this was the reason why I wrote this book, never had a mind that a 70, five or 79 year old Greek woman who feel inspired by that. And that's one person who's contacted me. So there may, there'll be a lot of people who read that book and will not have the opportunity to, to, to call you or to, to let you know. But thank you for obeying God and putting that book down and telling your story. I know it's going to transform lives. Now, by giving out 20 copies, okay? Um, and I want them to reach out to you. So what I'd like them to do is that if you want any of, any a copy of this book, you know, I would like you to send an email to Wura, okay? Just ask them for a copy of the book. Tell them you were here. Tell them you were here um, um, at this program, Change Because International, Common Mistakes That Young Leaders Make, and tell them you want a copy of the book. And tell her why you want that book. So Wura, quickly tell me, what's your email address? What email should they send it to? Adearoshegbe at gmail.com. You got to spell that for me, please. A D E A R O W O S E G B E at gmail.com. At gmail.com. I'm going to put that up now. At gmail.com. All right. Let's hope that's correct. Do you want to have a look at that? Is that correct? Yes. 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 All righty. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I'll okay. definitely. For people in Nigeria, I'll definitely be sending them the links to Roving Heights um, yeah. and make yeah. arrangements for that. Yeah, well, we'll leave that to you, okay? So, please, we've got 20 books reserved, all right, for you. 
um, um, and I'm sure you're going to have an amazing time with the book, okay? So please, 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 um, I would um, get you to um, take advantage of this book, Raised by Mama, Built by Abba. I like that. I like, I like that. Raised by Mama, Built by Abba. Author, we're our, our worship. But thank you, Wura. I'm adding Zephanie that I got, yep. I got to read the book, the manuscript, but after I finished, I had to order three copies as well. Amazing. I would give it to us. It's a really good book. I absolutely recommend it. Um, it's in line with some of the things we're talking about here. I've started yes. from the bottom up to the top, um, aligning with your purpose, your calling, irrespective of the obstacles and challenges facing you. So it's, it's an absolute recommendation. Thank you for coming. All right. Well, if you miss out on the 20 copies, you, it's a book that you, you should get. It has my highest recommendation. So God bless you guys. Okay. Thank you, Wura. God bless you. We'll let you go. All right. Wow. Three of us. Okay. Hopefully, Kemi Gukoya will join us. I know she also has an engagement, but you know, I like I like to hear. Okay. Well, let's just pivot now. We've got maybe just a few more minutes to go. All right. And I'll come to you, Kemi. Okay. And I, I want us to talk about medals, success. How you know we get it wrong sometimes. You know, when we have a superficial understanding of outcomes, how do we judge success as leaders? What is success to us as you know as 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 young leaders, and how can we get that twisted? For some people, it's maybe popularity. For some people, it's plaudit, it's prosperity, it's influence. Um, uh, so, what what how should you measure you know your success, and how can you how do you manage in a way that it doesn't become toxic? Okay, um, just before I answer that question around success, I, I'll build up. I'll follow up from what um, Oida Mola said about. Mm -hmm having that almost like what I call a skills gap analysis. So you, you're, you see where you want to go and you build towards it. But it's not just that. It's not just knowing what you want to do. It's knowing who you should be, right? So you see this vision and you, you know where you're going to and you apply yourself. But actually, it's not just about the what. It's about the who must I be to get to where I'm going. And that, that I, I guess, um, flows onto the question around success. So what really is success? For me, it's about being the person <laughs> that you need to be to achieve what you want to achieve. So it's really, it's not about, so a lot of young people these days, yeah? We live, we have a generation of people who want things quickly. And we talked about the process. We want things done quickly because we can't wait. We're so impatient. We, I, I, I think, you know, even looking at the, the microwave, for example, the microwave was invented because people wanted things done quickly. And it's just spiraled on. Technology is coming up. Everything's coming up to get things done quickly. So we want quick success. We want quick this, quick that. But things take time. And when you look at, a, when you look at the whole thing in, 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 in the context of success, for me, success is achieving God's purpose for your life however you want to put it. So it's not about, oh, I, I've got a great car. I've got a great job. I've got a great this. It's about fulfilling purpose, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. I've got this cup. This cup is intended for me to drink water in. Yeah. If I use it to sweep the floor, I'm yeah. abusing the cup. That's not yeah. success. So yeah. success is really being, you know, being, being achieving fulfilling purpose. That's how yeah. I see it. It's fulfilling the mandate that God has called you to do. I have a son, Tisha, he's 20. If I said to him, Tisha, um, I really fancy um, biscuits. I want, I want, I just want biscuits. Can you go to the shop? I give him a pound. He buys me, you know, a packet of, he gets to the shop. And then he says, oh, Coke is reduced from 99p to 1p. I actually would buy this for my mom because I think she would like the coke instead of the biscuits that I told her to buy. He gets home and I'm like, where's the biscuit? Oh, I thought you would like coke. Am I gonna say, oh, well done because I actually don't mind having coke instead of biscuits? No, so God has mandated us to be on planet earth, to fill the earth and do the work, you know, like Oyin Damala has said, do the work that he has assigned us to do on earth. Mm. Once we're in that place and we're doing it and we're achieving it and we're blessing humanity and we're and we're impacting on others' lives. So it's not about it's about impact, it's about influence and we're doing all of this. 
Now, it may not result in you having billions of pounds. It's not about the money. It's not about the material wealth. Mm. It's about the impact, the influence. It's about a legacy. So what legacy am I leaving behind? Must You know, someone once said, I have to live the legacy before I leave <laughs> a legacy. So you yeah. live it, walk it. And for you to do that, you really need to be in that place where you're aligned with your with your calling, with your mandate. It's mm. not about I've got this thing, therefore I'm successful. I've got a nice house because you know it's it's not in it's not in the in the, the what you have. It's in the who you are and who you become. So that's that's what I would say about it. And also, it's a journey. So success is a journey, and you need to think who do I need on this journey? Who do I need in my corner? And I'll talk to you about. Um, this whole thing about, you know, mentors, coaches, sponsors. You need people along the way. Young people tend to think, I can do things by myself. I've got this covered. No, 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 you can't. Mm. Um, and Sean talked about service. You have to serve. You have, there. it's just the law. There are certain things that you have to do to get to where God has assigned you. There are certain people that God has assigned for you to connect with to get to where you're going. May you not despise the people that God has called to help you. Because sometimes those people don't come in the form of great people. Absolutely. I, I talk about, <laughs> especially in the workplace, right? Yeah. The, cleaner, the person who's cleaning could be your destiny helper. The person yeah. who is, you know, the receptionist could be. So when you start to look down on certain people, then who knows? Maybe those are the people that God has assigned to you to be successful in the thing that he has called you to do. So it's just being careful and being mindful of who should be in my space. We talk about um, spatial awareness. Who should be in my intimate space? No more than five people. People you speak to on a daily basis who would get you to where you're going. Who should be in your personal space? No more than 12 people that you connect with and you get on with and you, touch, you have touch points. Who should be in your social space? People that you, you know, relate with and you know, you socialize with, and who should be in your public space, people who you just need to know for the sake of knowing. The minute you start to mix those people within those spaces, then you're in trouble. So if you have somebody who's meant to be in your public space, in your intimate space, circle of, you know, you're close to them, they will derail you. So it's understanding who you need along the journey of success. And, I, and I'll stop there. <laughs> Can you repeat the spaces again? Repeat the spaces. Okay. So I talked about the intimate space. So yeah. you shouldn't have more than three to five people, right? Yeah. So the people that you connect with on a daily basis that will get you to where you're going. These are the you know, divine connectors, the divine helpers that God has assigned. And you need to identify them per season. They may change, right? It's not to say you ignore them once they change, but you move into a phase where... God connects you to certain people. And Dr. Sam is one of them who God has connected me with, connected me with, you know, and I think he will forever be in my, in my space regardless, mm. right? But there are people that God will assign to you per time, per phase, per season. So you need to understand who those people are in your intimate space. There are people that you need to um, have in your personal space. So those are not necessarily people you speak to every day, but people you connect with, once or twice, you know, in a fortnight, in a month, you connect with them and, you know, they're people that would show you things that possibly, you know, give signpost you to things that you need and that sort of thing. There are people in your social space. Those are the people that you need to socialize with because, again, it's all about relationship building. You need to have good quality relationships. Whatever you put in is what we get out. You know, when you, when you call for a favor, who would you be, who, if you need a favor, who can you call on? Who can you ask for favors? People in that social space that you socialize with, that will network you, that will connect you with people that know people. And who's in your public space? So these are just people who know you, like you and follow you and trust you. You do need followers. <laughs> At the end of the day, you do need people who kind of connect to you. And my, my point is, don't mix those spaces up. Don't mix the people up because you're, if, you're, if you're on a journey, um, to success, and you mix those people up, you will end up, you, you'll either be delayed or you'll end up missing your destination because they can derail you. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Thank wow. you so much for that. Wow. Now, we are, um, 
we're running up now. So, um, Sean, before I get you to speak, um, please, if you have a question, um, please um, just uh, we'll take one or two questions and then we'll round up. So hopefully in the next, you know, five to ten minutes will be done. OK, so if you have a question, please put your comments, uh, the questions in the comment section so that we can answer the um, question. So, OK, so so Sean, let's talk about this. You know, I want you to just go on from what no, I just wanted to go start. OK, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Finish up first. No, no, I was just saying you should come from where she started. Yeah, I just want to start from somebody that is seeming like all of us kind of connect with on this platform. He's not on this talk, but he's seeming his, his name is consistent. <laughs> My very good friend, <laughs> Dr. Mm -hmm. Sabe Kudayo. And honestly, um, you're so right about inner circuses and, and those spaces. We've been together. We started Lautech together in um, 2003, 2004, before he left for Singapore and then now in New Zealand. But it's just amazing mm -hmm. the connection with him and the, the social support we just built around that. And I just want to give him a shout out because he's just such an amazing person that we need to just um, honor or recognize. Um, mm -hmm. As far as this is concerned, we shouldn't deprive him of that that honor that he's due to deserve. Um, I haven't said that. You, you touched on a very, very important thing, um, um, Kimberly, and I, I'm just here trying to digest everything. You know, and, and I think you specifically about process, <clears throat> picking up of um, looking where you are from going to Mola Johnson's part and then coming back to really look at the picture here and then which kind of connect to vision. But I, I, I just, I know this conversation will roll snowballs or something else. Dr. Nimi, you can come back and really ask Maggie because I'm, I'm, I'm getting a lot of concerns. My PhD, which I'm doing right now, is actually on this topic, on leadership. And in fact, what I'm doing is actually building a model on how to raise better leaders. Right? It's, it's quite mm -hmm. tough. I'm still trying to piece all the whole theory and everything together. Mm -hmm. But it's major in my heart because I, I've come to realize nations, the destiny of nations, destiny of people, uh, families, um, um, society are inherent in leaders. And when we talk about leaders, people always look at, oh, you are looking behind your shoulder. But in reality, in your space or wherever you are, you are a leader. And one thing I was beginning to realize, we say you're in a parking lot and then cars are going up and down. You just come out of your car and you say, you stop, you move, you go. You are taking responsibility at that very spot. You have become a leader. And so don't look, what we're talking here today now, people shouldn't be thinking, well, I'm not a leader. You are a leader. You have the capacity. You have the potential. How that will be accomplished is what we are exactly trying to do here with you to really already be tools with equipment. Not because we have arrived yet, but because of experiences and exposure we had and learning. And as I said, they read in my bio, I'm a student first above anything else before I actually become a, a teacher or something. But it's recognizing the fact that you have the capability, but understand the fact that it can easily be misconstrued. It can easily be misunderstood. You can easily begin to turn into personal benefit. And what I found with this generation is this fad, fashion, and what I call current affairs, just three things, fad, fashion, current affairs it, it, we, we get easily distracted oh this is not working or maybe this is not what i'm supposed to do and then you drop it and then you quickly go of course pivoting adjusting and making certain um, changes here and there is important as far as your destiny is concerned but develop the capacity to stay true to your calling develop the ability to ex extra and examine where your your niche is where you're called to be at least to start before your influence begin to grow. Don't run too quickly. And I, I'm saying this rationally because I've observed and studied a lot. And I realized that just when you're just about to break through, and I know, you know, in Africa, there's, there's struggle for money. There's, to make ends meet is hard. So you pretty much change course quickly and randomly. But take the time to persevere. You know, soft skills, I, I was, this is, this, I missed this earlier in, um, when I was talking earlier. The soft skills that emerge that actually qualify your leadership. So we move away from great men theory. The great men theory are the leadership type that is by your tall six foot. You know, you have this uh, charisma. But we are in a new dispensation now where the qualities of leadership are in what we call soft or on business like skill. I actually use the term for, for describing it. We're talking of humility. We're talking of the patience. We're talking of the the, 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 the grace that you carry on things that are not you can't you can't hold them or bottle them and they are not usually taught in school which makes and validates this kind of platform we have here that you cannot hear some of these things what do you, you hear talk about teach you about humility even people that are humble would not barely they'll barely even say it because humility is not something you can capture like that but these are things you actually need to take you to the peak of your leadership these are things you need to take you to the peak of your influence now talking about legacy just to wrap that up and i'll just pull some lines out of my my the final summary of my findings is studying 
truly great people in life and leaders. And I, I anchor it and I call it level seven leadership. Yeah. It's still, it's, it's not, you You probably not find it anywhere. I know I'm, I'm used to just giving this thing's term. And I threw it to my professor in the university now. They're like, what are you saying? Where did you get this? I'm like, I don't know. I just we should research it. <laughs> but level seven leadership, all research uh, leadership theory I found stopped at level six. And so we start from level one, which is autocratic, like um, 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 Nazis. This was the name of this man. Yeah. I was cussing yeah. Adolf Hitler. Yes, it's a model yeah. of level one. It's self-destructive. He doesn't care about the world. He doesn't care about anybody. All he just wanted to focus on is himself. And you will die eventually because when you pump yourself too much and elevate yourself beyond what you should be, eventually you will lead to self-destruction. Sadly, you also lead to the death of so many people. And so you move on to level three, level four. Level three and four are those people that are expert. They really know what they're doing. They know, you know, all the things that they could do. They're the best of the best in place of work, right? Any problem, they will call them to troubleshoot. But it's a build-up, right? You need to be a level three. You need level two. You need level three. Level four. Level five is the executives who are like CEOs. They play a role in influencing people, but they still necessarily don't understand the, the higher level, which is where I just call level seven. So fast track, I, I term level seven as the leadership type that is based on influencing and impacting lives. And I want to get this definition correctly because it's, it's still in it, it work, but it's a it, it type of leadership that influences and impacts life Unlike the other types of leadership, level six, six is also the same. Level six is more about not just institution, not about their universal, but level six is for a particular purpose of bringing about the better state of an organization. But level seven, which is the new one now, is about bringing glory to God. Yeah. That is what differentiates it. It's not about the people that want to serve. It's not about the organization, but it's about who called them, who inspire them to occupy this space who give them the mandate they are not even serving themselves they're just having an organization they serve you but it's not you as a way because they're serving you based on a greater call upon their life and that is why many of those you know you can call names now literally tell you their level seven because if they have served themselves or serve an organization the organization will be popular they might not be popular but yeah. you can serve god serve people impact lives and influence people and i want to say finally doing that your leadership doesn't as i said with the parking lot you are taking the responsibility there you're serving you are doing what god has called you to be it might not be a famous thing some of us mothers here listening your space of leadership and influence will be among your children within the space that god has given to you some of you will advance that to organizations and institutions that god will place in your hand pastors leaders it might be churches that you have become to influence lives but recognize that as a call upon your life Recognize that you are a level seven leader. You are not just leading for those children or your church, but you are accountable to a supreme God who has given you the space, the people, the process, and the opportunity to serve as a leader. I'll leave it there for now. <laughs> amazing, you. amazing. So we're going to ra wrap up now, okay? So we'll just take some questions very quickly. I know we all have to leave here right now, okay? We have to leave um, on the hour. So um, talk for me. You know, mute yourself and just quickly just bombard us with some of the questions. We just take, you know, it's, once it's a bit of my time, that's an eight minutes, we're done. Okay. Excellent. Um, what an awesome time we're having so far. So our very first question is from Fulisho Alamina. Let's bring that up. Okay, so I think we'll direct this question to Kemi Oye. So the question is, who should be in my intimate space, personal mm -hmm. space, my corner, my public space, etc., etc. Um. I must, oh, sorry. I think, I don't think it's the question. I think it's more of just the learning point. Yeah, yeah. I, thought you had I think it's a follow up to that. So the people in these spaces, must they all be physically present and do they have to know the place they occupy in your life? So the simple answer is no. They don't all have to be physically present. Um, it could be by books. So, you know, the reason why we have books is so that we learn. Um, we could have mentors who we've never met. We could have mentors who are long gone and they, they're you know, long gone and they're dead. So I think it's not about being physically present with the person. It's the learning that you want to achieve from these people. So like I, um, we, we all talked about Dr. Sam earlier, I've not met him physically, but the impact he's had on my life is, I mean, I, I cannot even... I can't even be more grateful to God than than I have. I mean, gosh, I can't it even. Looks like, it looks like I have to charge him for some. Some I have to charge him. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Send me the bill. Send me the bill. Don't worry. Send me the bill. I'll pay on my brother. I'll tell you the bill. I think I'm physically. Yeah. So actually, no, you don't have to be physically. They don't have to be physically present, and they don't have to know the place that they occupy in your life. You don't. You don't say to them, "Oh, by the way, you're in my intimate space." It does. It's for you to understand where they are per time. Mm. It's for yeah. you to understand. So if you feel, for example, you've got somebody in your intimate space and they're not helping you achieve what you want to achieve or you slowly remove yourself and move them into your personal space. So your level of contact with them, well, you're in control of that, isn't it? So you're in control of who's in your intimate space. You are the one who's in control of everyone in your space. So if you realize, actually, I don't need you in my intimate space because you're not allowing me to achieve what I want to achieve, or you're taking me down the road that I don't want to, you move them into the space that they should be, and you have control over that. So they don't need to know, no. Because it, is, it, sounds, it sounds a bit like proud <laughs> to say, oh, I'm moving you <laughs> into this space. <laughs> but it doesn't help relationships. So yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. Excellent, thank you. Move on to our next question. Is service a way of self-discovery? I mean, can you discover, I guess, yourself by serving anyone? Absolutely. I would Denis, you wanted to, yeah, I, I just I wanted to share the diagram that Dani um, earlier. I don't know if we can pull that diagram off now. We forgot a little bit in the beginning. Um, yeah, okay. Let me just bring yeah. it up. Yeah. 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 So I think maybe this will help there to answer the question, Stephen. Um, so there's a place of um passion, your your values, there's a place of your gift. Um, or your potential there's a place of valuable contribution so that area of valuable contribution is a place of service but it's when you mix all of them together because you can be passionate you can be gifted but if you don't serve you those those gifts so it will be latent let's put it that way so your potential is going to be latent but it's when uh, your gift is going to be latent but it's as you serve with it that brings it to to become more of its potential so you you need to serve it's part of the process of self-discovery um in fact for me personally, uh, it's just serving that really just brought me forward. <laughs> and maybe that's why I'm more like, and if you observe with many of us here, if we had not gotten the opportunity or the space to just use what we have in the first place. So it's, it's like a bounce back process, right? Um, I call it a value adding loop. You serve, you you look at what happened through the event, you over you examine or go do self-evaluation. And then through that process, you are discovering yourself more and more. So it is it is actually um, a self-discovery mechanism to serve. Yeah. Amazing. Excellent, thank you. Okay, let's just rush to see this next question. Are there some basic skills that you can share that help in maintaining work-life balance while striving towards making impact and being a great leader, Dr. Nee? All right, work-life balance. What I would usually say in this situation would be, um, Com com number one, com compartmentalization, compartmentalization, um, very important. Um, I found it very useful, all right, to have compartments and to work with, by, by having compartments, you know, in terms of the different expressions that I have, all right, of course I have a calendar, all right? So, and oh, one of the ways of maintaining work-life balance is by being organized. You know, a lot of people, what, what tends to happen is that work your what you do maybe your nine to five or your five to nine invades into your personal life so for example my, my nine to five i'm a neurologist my wife even though she's a stroke nurse doesn't really care much not that she doesn't care much but i don't come home and talk about my patients but you see my five to nine which is church and which is my purple building call which is change makers and all that my wife is involved now she's not the camera type as well so you probably already see her but she's behind i'm sure she's watching right now you know doing her usual stuff so she's part of it she knows what the programs we talk about it so i make sure that my five to nine is not you know i didn't just go to work and then i come back again and i'm buried in stuff she's a part of it okay and that way by doing it so if you're married for example one way of achieving work-life balance is by getting your partner your, your family and your kids involved in what we in what you're doing okay making it around the family as well of course that doesn't mean you drop the family time but getting them involved they have a sense of ownership and they, then they can back you up okay but by also compartmentalizing you are also able to organize yourself so for example even though Tofumi knows my family and she knows my wife and my kids 
all right she doesn't manage my family roster like our <laughs> dinner tonight. Tofumi doesn't know what i'm having for dinner all right <laughs> so yeah so and Tofumi doesn't manage my business but you know you know you know no she doesn't so and even in church so pretty much i find that by doing that it helps i also have calendars so for example i get a lot of messages from people who want mentorship who want advice counseling even in church except it's an emergency if you want to speak to me you book an appointment i have to do that because you know it was just not sustainable for me anymore okay so most times i don't do random oh please advise me or oh, please counsel me or oh, please i i rarely do that now if you want except it's an emergency and i know what an emergency is all right if it's an emergency fine if it's not i'll send you a link and then we can talk about it all right i think now i think we've got to bring it to a close now to finish isn't it it's eight o'clock now. Well, what an amazing day. Thank you for those who have stayed with us throughout. Thank you, thank you to Linda Mala Johnson. Thank you to Kemi Kukwai. They had to leave early because they had other engagements. Thank you to you, Kemi Oli, for being here. Thank you to you, Shimo Yeniro, for staying with us. Kemi, I know you can go. This is a cue for you to leave now because I know you've got a engagement. So, God bless you. Thank you for being here. And Shimo, thank you for staying awake uh, all the way from Canada. Thank you. Hopefully, you know, last time I was in Canada was maybe five years ago when next I'm in Canada. I'll make sure, I'm, you know, we, 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 we catch up. Thank you. God bless you. I'll let you go as well now. Thank you for being there for us. And, you know, we will certainly, certainly um, catch up. God bless you so much. Thank you, Tofumi. What an amazing journey this has been for us. Um, you know, it's been really, really great. And thank you for your service. I'll bring up Mary as well. Mary, where is she? Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for supporting. And, and for everyone out there, what's so thank you. What did you say, Mary? I said I've been somewhere behind the scene. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Mary, for helping out. Okay, so thank you guys for everything. Uh, for all the people out there watching us right now, thank you for being a part of this um, show, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we've had people from all over the world, from Australia, New Zealand, Africa, um, Europe, and the United States. Thank you to Omar Bello, please. Don't forget Backstory premieres on the 14th of, of June. It's an amazing um, um, amazing project where Omar will be talking about the stories, backstory. She'll be talking about stories of individuals. So it's premiering on the 14th of June. So please don't forget about that. And don't forget about the free book. We're giving out 20 um, copies today. All right. So please go to send an email. Send an email to Wura. Make sure you do that. Okay. Send an email to Wura um about the about the book okay um that email is right there on the screen now right now raised by mama built by abba okay raised by mama built by abba wow what an amazing time we've had so god bless you so much it's been a great great um um you know time for me um putting this together and thanks to all the people who have joined us i'm sorry we could not answer all your questions if you still have questions please contact me you can contact contact me on instagram at me underscore borrere or you can send me an email info at me .com. it's been a great pleasure um, having you here i'm going to leave you with this wonderful song by one of my other mentees he's not here now but and i think he's in the audience you know he knows i love this song so much okay um i'm sure you're going to find it beneficial you're going to find it um um, a blessing okay so thank you so much again guys for being here um god bless you indeed Man, you're gonna like this. You're gonna be good, bro. Do it. It's Kings on the Beat. Mom, it's all for you. Yeah, it's all for you. The way that I speak, yeah, the way that I move. God, it's all for you. Yeah, it's all for you. Giving you the glory is all that I do. Lord, it's all for you. Don't rap for fame. I'm staying in my lane. Every next again, no smart on my name. Be clean and no sense today. I got saved. I'm so blessed. Never
never settle for the less I've been knocking down so many times I gotta keep on going, never give up on all my dreams I take dominion over the fish, over the sea, over the air Animals, creepy things, give me you, it's all for you Lord, it's all for you, yeah, it's all for you The way that I speak, yeah, the way that I move God, it's all for you, yeah, it's all for you Giving you the glory is all that I do And Lord, it's all for you, yeah, it's all for you Following your ways while I'm speaking your truth God, it's all for you, smashing devils out and loose Spin flame to fire, melt mics when I do it My God, it's all for you, everything I do Never do it for the fam, never do it for the man Always do it for the kingdom, I'm rapping Jesus name It's only for you, Lord, it's never for the fam Lord, it's all for you